Bros play. Welcome back to Crickety Crack Mercenaries with a money truck. I don't really want to Money do this. truck. This food needs to get to Seri Juan. Sure, why ASAP. Not. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but go! <laughs> did you see that? Oh, wait, did it say that? At the top, it just said go with an exclamation mark. <laughs> Effective. As if I didn't know that the three minute time limit and the aimer were a good enough indication. That's a real problem with some games, man. They don't believe that you will want to progress without their in incentive. And it's, it's, it's bad design, it's really what it is. I, I would like to say it nicer, but it's really what it is. Like, the Souls series is probably the greatest example. And they... Alright. They did the same thing with um, Sultan Sanctuary. It begins with a vague... Uh, I, uh, vague objective without really saying you have to do it. It's just like, find the king. Uh, oh! <laughs> Sarah Wan, here we come! <laughs> shit, you know they shit, wanted you to shit, do that. no. <laughs> yeah, if it falls on its on its roof, it explodes. Oh, what the fuck? Can you even get into the car? Okay, well. Because they don't <laughs> need their food anymore. <laughs> fuck you, Sarah Wan. Yeah, I'd rather not feed people if I'm not going to get paid. That's a good way to look at it. It's such That's a horrible, probably a social commentary, isn't it? Such an asshole mentality is definitely a social commentary. Um, what the fuck was I talking about? Oh, yeah, Sultan Sanctuary. Vague objective. The only reason you're moving forward is because you just want to move forward. That's what I love about the whole Soul series, is that it just starts and just goes, well, have a fun time. Yeah, enjoy. They don't even explain the controls if you don't want to. Really? Yeah. That's gotta be- oh yeah, you said uh, in Dark Souls they use tombstones to tell you about them. Um, in the second one they use tombstones for some reason, okay, instead of the messages. The messages like the ones that you normally leave for people, like bloodstains? Yeah, so that's how they introduce you to messages in the first and third game. Is that at first they are actually messages from the developer on how to play. And then after a while, like you're reading them because you've already like you read one and it says like RB to attack. It's like oh cool, these are these are instructional. So now you're actively searching for them, and then you find one that says something like praise the sun. And you're like the fuck does that mean? And then you start to realize that these are not all written by the dev. Yeah, and in this in the first game you actually have to buy an item to view rate and uh, and write um, comments. That's a cool idea, so that it's not just a built-in feature. Yeah. Set it one. Well, as YouTube lets everybody do that, as long as you actually no, and again, YouTube account is like that item. <laughs> I guess, yeah, yeah. Because right, you can just go and view YouTube from any browser, but if you want to actually have any sort of an impact, you need to have an account. Yep. And at the moment, you really do have a massive impact if you comment. At the moment, you will you will be remembered. I remember comments right now. There will be a time where I can't even look at them because there's gonna be just too many of them, and too much hatred. The inevitable, the inevitability of success is that you, you uh, accumulate haters. And right now we don't have any, so if you have something to say, fucking say it. Yeah, if you got some hate you want to spread. If, I mean, if you have something negative, but it's constructive in a way where it sounds like you actually care about the quality of the show, fucking tell me. Because right now it's only me. I'm the only one who cares. I talk to Dad, and, and I talk about the, the difference between quality and episodes, and he says, oh, I thought the whole thing was great. Because to him, it's his children creating something. Yeah, he's not an objective fan, that's for sure. No, and that's what, like, it's great to have yes and no people in your life. Dad is a yes man for me. Dane is a no person for me. I know that if I want, if I want something to go through a like, ridiculous scrupulation, if that's the right word, that I bring it to Dane. He will pick apart anything I say immediately before I finish my sentence. Scrutiny might be the word you're looking for. Yes. I prefer what I said, but I can't remember what I said. Scrupulation. Scrupulation. Oh, you know what? We're going to stick with scrupulation. <laughs> scrupulation. Um, well, as with, with that, it's like, oh, that was great. And that's great, too. But, although, I mean, I shouldn't say that, like, uh, like he's only a yes man. He, he's definitely had uh, objective statements. Well, I find he also comes from a different generation. Like, anyone who, who comes from a different generation isn't really our target audience. Because our target audience is, like, kind of ourselves, mm -hmm. in a way. Well, I am I'm the target demographic. People who watch YouTube all the time, who want to watch long-form Let's Plays, and that's me. So I, I try to use myself as an example. And there's certain times, like, um, I mean, the, the Grumps are a big uh, 
a big thing for me, and I, I don't think I've talked about this yet. I'm aware of how often I bring them up, and I try not to. It's called the fanboy, and it's something that you're supposed to avoid, typically. Um, but it's important to discuss them because they are the reason why we've done this. I, I discovered YouTube as a platform to really do something with in early 2015. And I was watching Markiplier and PewDiePie and Jacksepticeye, and I thought, that's what I have to do. And if you go to early, uh, our early channel stuff, it's mostly me with face cam, doing solo stuff, cutting things together, doing like three-minute videos that took two hours to record and shit like that. And then I found the Grumps in March and just it blew up my fucking mind. I was like, people will watch two people unedited long form? Holy shit. And then, and they're so popular. And I and that, Well, and then and you then, discovered you like it. It's not like, you know, people will watch this, I can make money doing this. It, yeah, it was going to be just a format, like one of the things that we do, and we ended up f figuring out that it's the bread and butter, and I can't even go back to, to solo <laughs> Let's Playing anymore. Please? But yeah, it's important because I, I, I introduced you to the idea, and, and you're in love with it now, and they introduced me to the idea, and now I'm in love with it. So it all came... Uh, Star Fox Adventures. The whole thing started with Star Fox Adventures. Um, that's that's where the Grumps came up with the idea to do it themselves. What do you mean? They were sitting down playing Star Fox Adventures with uh, Barry, one of their editors who's now also a Grump. And uh, there's a panel where Eager Raptor talks about, hey, like I was hanging out with John Tron, it was really fun, I'd love to do that again. And it turned into Game Grumps. Wow. Yeah. Just one of those simple things. Yeah. And then if you trace back Star Fox Adventures, it wasn't originally Star Fox Adventures, it was called Dinosaur Island or Dino Island or something like that. Ow, but fuck you guys! What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> that was really fluid. That was, that was the most fluid contract cancellation I've ever seen. Yeah, two <laughs> rockets and that was it. That's all she wrote. Uh, it's an interesting t uh, thing, Star Fox Adventures, because they were making Rare Rareware, who made Banjo-Kazooie, and a few other amazing games back in the day. Um, they were making a game called Dinosaur Island, which had a fox. And then Nintendo said, hey, we got a fox? You got a fox? You want to make a game about a together? You want to make a game about a fox? <laughs> the problem was, it was basically a Zelda clone with Star Fox slapped in there. It was, it was very, very Zelda-esque. And you'd collect things that were very reminiscent of rupees. John Sean probably does the best uh iteration of it because he he it's the wrong word but he he does a a um a play-by-play -play of how he felt when he first played it because it was it was a while it was like six or eight years i think from the last from uh star fox 64 which is a classic for us and we loved that game too and he said like it's finally happened like rareware got together oh my god this is amazing and then you're you're playing as a blue fox on a pterodactyl and you're like oh what is this okay and then there's a little part and it's like 30 seconds long where you play as star fox in an r wing and you're flying through space and john's just freaking out he's like it's it it's back new graphics and everything and it's over i didn't even get to shoot anything just a tiny scene <laughs> yeah and his reaction yeah. when it's like he's like setting down the r wing and he gets out and then the guy's like you can't have any guns here. And John's like, are you sure you don't want to go back into space? <laughs> I definitely, definitely want to go back into space. Seriously, Rareware. No, not Rareware. They don't have that anymore. Nintendo has the license now. Um, well, if that's the case, I have something to say to Nintendo. Hey. What? <laughs> Sorry. I said that like you had already said it. Go ahead. Oh, no. <laughs> Some very important words Nintendo has to remember. Bow before the great Andros. <laughs> the hatches are open. Just in case they forgot. Okay, I thought you were going to say something really mean-spirited that could potentially uh, impact our future playing of Nintendo games. <laughs> no, no. Nintendo just has to remember their own words. Yes. They, I icon? Icon? They did... Icon! They did... The South Koreans recently moved into Incheon. I've got a count. Oh. Okay... <laughs> I th I'm pretty sure this is actually a really boring mission where I just follow him around and let him journalize things. Journalize. Wait for the journalist to finish filming. Okay. Yo, get ready. Get... Okay. I like his voice. 
Yeah, they actually did a really good job with his voiceover. He's got a pretty voice. I'm going down this hill like a madman, though. Nice. Yes. Yes, um, apparently American Humvees fly. America. The... The home of the great? The two... <laughs> The uh, did you do? Did you know that the bald eagle actually has a pitiful sound? Like what you know is the bald eagle is actually another eagle. What? That like? Gah! That's not a real like. I remember. I can't remember how an actual bald eagle sounds, but it's it's like it's pretty it's pretty funny. I can't even say I know what my impression of a bald eagle sounds like. Fucking civilians. Like yeah, what I know is a bald eagle. I don't even know what it would sound like. All I can think of is like a hawk. Yeah, yeah, they use some other noise and now people associate the two of them, but they just not actually know what they sound like. Well, you know what beavers sound like? No. So beavers actually, I don't think, make too many like vocal noises, but what they do is they take their flat, floppy fucking tail and they just smack it on the water <laughs> like that. So that's the sound you hear when you hear a beaver, just a really loud smacking, like Bruce Lee just going at a barrel of water. Our dog uh, charged a beaver in its dam. And then next moment, our dog is running away from the beaver in its dam. <laughs> yeah, not smart. They're badasses, man. You well, they chew about... through trees. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. you got an animal that can chew through a tree as a regular part of its, of its day. Like, soft flesh is nothing. <laughs> yeah, soft seriously. Flesh. <laughs> Imagine how hard you have to bite to get your teeth into a tree, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I tried it once. Just joking. Didn't work out so well. <laughs> Didn't work well for the next guy. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend oh. it. Spotted by the North Korean officer. I've definitely got much better at driving since we've started. The driving is very weird. You actually have like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bitch! Holy shit, there's some mayhem. I love this game. Uh, yeah, the driving is... You have way too much traction. Like, look how... Yeah. Like, no one can turn like that no. going max speed. But once you learn that, it's actually pretty sweet. Nampo. Yeah, he really wants to see all this shit, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. This is my favorite turn, because I keep getting worried that I'm going to turn before the fence and just get mowed by that <laughs> building. Every time I see that, I want to remind you like, of the ghost ghost Arr. building. Ooh, that's a nice little shoreline. Totally. <laughs> I don't know if that was racist or not. <laughs> it's not. I There was a guy, he, his name is Amin uh, Yashed. And people read it as I'm in, I'm in your shed, in your shed. Uh. and he 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 was on Twitter and he said like stop calling me that you racists and I'm thinking that's not racism if someone chose to give you a hard time because they don't like where you came from and it was that situation it would be racism but this is just a basic phonetic observation if there like there's plenty of words that are some English. people's last names are like goober like they're English people whose last name yeah. is like honky and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. It's just, it's just a bad name. I'm <laughs> sorry. A, one of the guys who, who runs, uh, what the fuck am I watching right now? Um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I think it is, has a guy named Norm Hiscock. That's hilarious. Yeah, I have a buddy whose <laughs> last name's Hiscock. I wish I was going to mention that. But, uh, <laughs> well, everyone, I mean, it's a, it's a fairly common name. Yeah. And everyone, like, tries to, uh, his kook? Nope. Um, no. Nope, there's no his kook here. <laughs> Call it writer. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm here. <laughs> Just, damn it. Hey, he jumped out pretty damn good. Good for him. You know what? I'm going to take this vehicle. Well done. Not done yet. I love his Jurassic Park music. Yeah, especially when I'm about to get in Jurassic Char Park Jeep. Dude, Jurassic Park the game was one of the first games, or if not the first game ever. How much did that take from you? 25 grand. Oh, okay, I thought it said 250 grand. I was like, journalists aren't worth that much. <laughs> oh, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Except maybe George Wiedemann. Or Weidman. George Weidman? Yeah, Super Bunny Hop. Oh. 